when you take a look at the COVID-19 pandemic, it's made um, it even more important to implement remote operations. During this time in the United States, of course, the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency has identified 16 employment categories as essential critical infrastructure. Uh, and those workers are as critical, and they include a variety of areas, including chemical sector, critical manufacturing, the energy sector, food and agriculture, government facilities, information technology, water and wastewater systems, and a, a number of others. The CISA also advised critical infrastructure companies to do the following. First, to secure systems to enable remote access, including implementing multi-factor authentication. Next, to test remote access solutions capacity and increase capacity. And then to increase awareness of information technology support mechanisms for employees who work remotely. A number of experts predict that remote work and remote access will become more common as a result of this pandemic. So now is a good time to take a look at remote monitoring from your organization's standpoint. It happens to be the case you're on, of course, a, a webinar about Ignition. The Ignition is an excellent platform for remote monitoring for several reasons. One of those reasons is that Ignition is unlimited. Ignition can connect to practically anything in your enterprise. That includes touch panel screens, databases, PCs using any operating system, mobile devices, PLCs, LIMS devices, and a whole lot more. And Ignition has an unlimited licensing model, which means that you pay by the server instead of paying more for each client and tag. This means you can have an unlimited real-time and historical tags, unlimited runtime and developer clients, unlimited projects, screens, unlimited database connections, unlimited reporting, unlimited alarming, and a whole lot more. This all helps out. And so we, what, why we do license it that way really has to do with something that I'm sure many of you are familiar with. The law has been around for a long time called Metcalf's Law, which basically says that the utility of any application or any solution or a network is a function of the number of users squared. Uh, if you give um, two people a telephone, it gives you a certain amount of functionality. If two billion people have a mobile phone, you have a whole lot more functionality and a whole lot more value. So when you think about the manufacturing sector, the more people and things you connect, the more value you create. And unlimited licensing lets you take full advantage of Metcalf's law because it empowers people, in this case, your remote workforce, and it's the only licensing model that can keep up with the speed of innovation in today's world and how it's moving at that unbelievable rate. So remote monitoring will be more effective if you happen to have a really good mobile access and web apps that your team can use. And I think that makes a really good time for me to turn it over to you, Kevin, so you can talk about the, our solution for these ignition perspective. Take it away, Kevin. Yeah, so as you mentioned, Ignition Perspective, uh, it's our newest visualization module on the Ignition platform. What it lets you do is easily build mobile industrial applications. Uh, you can build them in HTML5 and CSS. You don't actually have to know any HTML5 or CSS, though, uh, because Ignition makes those tools visual. It's drag and drop. It's connecting things. And if you've ever used Ignition before, it's using the same design tools, such as bindings and um, connections and the same tag system and the same scripting system behind the scenes. Um, so there's there's some new visual tools to learn, but there's not a new, completely new paradigm, and you don't have to learn any new languages. So what it lets you do is easily build these web applications, um, both for mobile devices and for desktops. Uh, you can see and monitor the SCADA system in real time, and you can arrange components in different ways depending on the screen design. Um, and the screen size, which is really important for if you want to create a single application that's going to be able to run on a mobile device and inside a web browser, uh, you can do that. Uh, and in fact, we'll show a quick example of that a little bit later. I have a demo coming up that I'm excited to be able to show a number of these things to you folks. Now, a big part of the overall point of this webinar is security. Uh, and you saw right in the title, securely monitor your systems remotely. Uh, so we have a bit of a focus on security inside here. If you're not security experts, uh, you can completely be forgiven for that. Uh, it often takes a lot to become a security expert, and I certainly didn't start there either. Uh, but we have a whole slew of security mechanisms built into Ignition 
to try to make it so you don't have to be a security network in order to comply with a variety of security best practices. Ignition Platform supports SSL and TLS for encryption, more specifically TLS 1.2. Uh, is what is used by default. When 1.3 comes out, we'll support that. Uh, we're keeping up with the latest and the best practices. So TLS 1.2, for those of you who don't know, that is the latest HTTPS, latest encryption technology standard. Um, and 1.3 is right around the corner for web technology. So if you go to your banking website, uh, you're going to be using TLS 1.2. Uh, you have that directly inside Ignition as well. You want to ensure those best practices whenever you're doing any sort of remote monitoring. So you want to make sure that that is turned on. Encrypted data is turned on. If you have unencrypted data, there's anything that's going over that line. It could potentially be monitored by a bad actor who gets access to a network, for example. Or if you're going over the internet, um, then someone could be watching that traffic between and seeing some of that information that's going back and forth. Some of the information might be fine if if it's seen, but some information you might not want folks to see production counts for different things. So uh, as a best practice, we always recommend first step, uh, stage one, regardless of if you're using Ignition or you're using something else, turn on that encryption, especially if you're doing remote communication and remote connections. The perspective module also has support for federated identity providers um, for those standards. Uh, for those of you who are technical in this area, it's SAML2 and OIDC. Uh, both of those are supported inside Ignition directly. Um, and those are a couple of uh, technologies, a couple of uh, protocols that let you use systems like Ping and Okta and Active Directory Federated Services, ADFS. Um, so if you have other web apps that are using single sign-on, uh, often you can just con configure Ignition to use that exact same set of single sign-on, um, both for the apps and for web browser visualizations. And then, of course, there's a very rich permissions model that's part of this as well. This is a checklist that we would recommend going down for any system that is set up in a way that you want to securely monitor different items, specifically any SCADA or IIoT system. If you come from the top to the bottom, that encrypted communications is the top item there. That's the HTTPS, uh, SSL, TLS. That is a very important piece, uh, as I mentioned, of any security, and that's step one. Uh, a side note, we have a security hardening guide that has guidance for each one of these sections. So if you need that um, later on, it's posted directly on our website uh, and uh, we have a PDF and we also have just a web version that you can access and it goes over each one of these sections. And these, these headings were actually pulled from that document because when we put that document together, we distilled down the most important things for folks to focus on with security. So encrypted communications is step one. And then after that, um, device, OPC, MQTT security, so setting up encryption for those where you can, and then device security. Um, often devices don't support encryption, and so figuring out a security strategy for that is important. Some folks will do a small data collector right next to it. So if you're using Ignition, maybe Ignition Edge, and then do encrypted communication from Ignition Edge to a central Ignition gateway in order to secure that piece of the communication there. Other folks might have uh, VPN connections or other small data collectors that are next to devices, or they have network segmentation where the controls network is unencrypted and other networks are encrypted and the security uh, controls are around the network access. So uh, there's no access to that network from anyone who isn't an authorized user. Security zones are important. So in addition to application security, which is next, those security zones allow for different folks in different places to have different access. So if they're coming from outside the network or if they're coming from different subnet, inside an IP address uh, range, uh, that different physical location, they may not have the same permissions as if they're local or if they're sitting inside a, a plant or an area. Application security would be security roles. Audit logging is important to turn on. With Ignition, you can just turn that on and um, by going to the auditing section. A database security, there's encryption that can be done for database communication and using uh, users that aren't the root user for the database is an important piece. 
platform security is important to focus on. Uh, so operating systems and anything that's surrounding different items, um, Active Directory, authentication sources. Um, you'll want to tie into the systems that IT already has in place in order to make sure that you're protected by the protections that they have in place uh, wherever you can. And then software updates. It's important that you're subscribed to security mailing lists. Ignition uh, Inductive Automation has one of those. It is important that for any software, uh, you know if there are any security updates that have come out. And if so, uh, you can evaluate and see if that affects you and if you want to update to the latest version of the software. Uh, and uh, so, of course, Ignition has updates that come out about once a month uh, for different versions. And very quickly, uh, MQTT uh, for IIoT is a very important protocol that we have been doing a lot around uh, their MQTT modules for the Ignition platform that you can tie into. Um, the protocols uh, allow you to get large amounts of data from remote sites, uh, lowers bandwidth utilization, it opens up the ability to uh, collect a lot of data that's trapped on the plant floor or at the uh, remote locations. Uh, you can capture that data from the field devices uh, and easily add that edge computing onto Ignition, um, changing that push-pull model. Um, and it's also very firewall friendly, so you can have outgoing connections from individual locations to a centralized broker instead of needing to have incoming connections through firewalls. These add-on modules for this remote monitoring, the perspective modules, very common for folks to use, and that's what we've been talking a lot about. Vision module can be used for this as well. Uh, so if you're already familiar with vision, that's uh, certainly a 100% um, good option for doing this, and we have a lot of folks who are doing that too. The perspective module allows it to run in a web browser, so there's no client install. The vision module does have a client install, um, but other than that, they should provide very similar functionality to the users, and uh, both, yeah, both are great options. And then the enterprise administration module allows central administration of multiple ignition gateways. Reporting module allows for PDF reports. An alarm notification module provides alarm notifications, and that goes over HD. That, that can, uh, of course, be encrypted communication out to whatever's sending the alarms, um, but you can send out text messages, you can send out uh, emails that are going out, you can send out uh, voice calls where it's going to actually call individual folks, and there are pipelines that you can set up that can be escalated in different ways as well. There was a question, if I go back to the uh, security just for a second, a question came in, what is platform security? So that is specifically talking about operating system security. So that's talking about the platform that you're running on. So Ignition is going to be running on Linux or Windows or, or Mac OS. Um, the server itself is, and you'll want to make sure that you have security set up on that platform as well. Um, so you want to make sure that you're going through and properly securing the individual pieces of that, keeping up with the latest security patches there. Um, so that's just an important piece of your overall security architecture. If your operating system isn't secure, then potentially someone could get into the operating system and uh, try to uh, be a bad actor in some ways from there and try to compromise some things that you have going. So having that security in place is an important piece of your overall security uh, tapestry that you have. All right, best practices for remote monitoring. Uh, you want to use VPN for security and privacy when you can, yeah, but you don't necessarily need to if you have encryption and you have some other security things in place. So if you don't want to use a VPN, you can use two-factor authentication to try to still achieve the same or similar level of protection that you might have from VPN. That, uh, that's, you know, prompts with Duo or other uh, systems that might pull up on your phone that say, uh, do you verify that this is you? You type in your username and password, and then there's an additional factor from an app on the phone or um, from a text message that comes through or something like this. And if we take a quick look at the architecture examples that we have here, so there's on-site, on-premise alarms, uh, or uh, sorry, on-site, on on-premise systems. So if you have Ignition sitting there, or you have another SCADA system there, it doesn't really matter. Um, ignition for other SCADA systems generally can connect over uh, OPC or possibly some other mechanisms as well uh, and pull in tags and make those available. Uh, that system, whatever it is on site, 
uh, has the connectivity to pull in tags, and then those can be accessible remotely. This is showing a VPN. So this VPN would be secured with the HTTPS security that we have here. Um, and this would be uh, this would be going from an IT department, generally speaking, setting up that VPN, and that's encrypted communication that's going back and forth right there. These clients, designers, anything that's viewing Ignition at that point would be viewing it through this encrypted communication um, and then uh, having access to it. And you could set up those security zones so that based on where they're logged in from, they have different permissions versus someone who's on site. Now, some folks uh, like this a lot. Some folks say that they want to have a separate system that's in the cloud that um, doesn't have, so that they don't have multiple different uh, communication uh, items that are coming through here. So for these clients and designers, they might want that to go through, uh, instead of going through a VPN, have a separate ignition gateway that's up in the cloud, have this going through either a VPN or a secured channel to that ignition server, and then having a single remote system or a hundred remote systems or a thousand remote systems that are all connected through the cloud ignition gateway. If you do this, uh, there's a couple of other layers here that you can set up. So this firewall and this communication, this can be set up as completely read-only communication between these two systems. Um, so any tags that exist here are read-only tags from there. Uh, and then this can be set up just over standard encryption um, communication. So for a phone um, and for a desktop, you can just type in an address and go there and see the system and browse down things that are on this site. Uh, but not necessarily have to have a connection back into the site in order to see the data that's coming right now. We see a lot of folks starting to go toward this type of um, setup because you can just type in an address uh, and you get there immediately. Phones, you don't have to set up a separate VPN connection. You can still do two-factor authentication uh, with this system, so you're still compliant with a lot of companies' security policies doing this, and if it's set up as read-only communication there, then there aren't any worries about someone getting in and actually changing the manufacturing system in any way, um, changing a, a live system, doing writes back to tags, things like that. Uh, as Don mentioned, you can do writes to a variety of different things. Um, and writes are an option that you have as you're going through the system here. But uh, doing writes is not the focus of this webinar. If we were doing uh, right, so there are a few additional security considerations that um, that are important, and we're happy to have a conversation about those. 